Now we can look at something called the difference quotient of a function. So the difference quotient of a function is something that gives the average rate of change of a function. Now, what does this mean? If y equals f of x, then delta y over delta x, which you may know as the slope or the average rate of change, is given by the second y value minus the first y value all over the change in x, or the second x value minus the first x value. Let's take a look at this graphically. I know we haven't discussed graphs of functions, but I think you'll be able to follow along. So let's imagine that we have a function. Call it f. Now, let's suppose that we have our first x value, then we have our second x value. That first x value is assigned to some y value. So that's called, we'll call that y1. So x2 is likewise assigned to some y value. So what is the rate of change between these two points? Well, let us call the first point just x. And then its corresponding y value will be f of x. Now some distance away from x, we'll call that distance h, is another x value. So what is x increased by a, fact, by a value of h? It's going to be x plus h. Now if that's the input, what's the output of our function going to be? It's going to be f of that. So we'll look at f of x plus h. So now what is delta y? Delta y is going to be the difference of those two. It's y2 minus y1, or f of x plus h minus f of x. So that is our delta y. Delta x is the distance between these two x values, which is just h. Now, we can go ahead and find the difference quotient without completely understanding what's going on in the graph. But it is a way to talk about the average rate of change of a function. So here we have a function, f of x equals 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 and we want to find the difference quotient. So f of x plus h minus f of x all over h becomes, let me make my h a little bit better. So, what's f of x plus h? Everywhere we see x, we will replace with x plus h. So we have 3 times x plus h quantity squared minus 2 times x plus h plus 5. So this is just f of x plus h minus, now we need f of x, but f of x is given by 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. So we have 3x squared minus 2x plus 5, but this is all f of x, so we need to subtract all of this. And this is all divided by h, so notice we have f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. 
Now let's simplify the numerator. So the square of x plus h, we would have to FOIL that out. x plus h times x plus h is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Then we distribute the negative 2. So we have minus 2x minus 2h. And then we have plus 5. And then again, distribute. We'll distribute the negative. So we have minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. And don't forget, this is all over h. Now we distribute the 3. So we have 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 2x minus 2h plus 5 minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 5 and this is all over h. Now we can collect like terms. 3x squared minus 3x squared disappears. They add to 0. 6xh has no like terms. So we have 6x, 6xh plus, now we have 3h squared minus 2x cancels with plus 2x. They add to 0. Minus 2h. And then our plus 5 minus 5 again add to 0. And this is all over h. Now we'll notice that in the numerator, there is an h in all terms. So we can factor out the h. Now the h cancels. And our answer is 6x plus 3h minus 2. Now our function is 3 over x. So we have f of x plus h minus f of x, and this is all over h. What's this equal to? Well, we will first find f of x plus h, which means that everywhere we see x, we need to substitute in x plus h. So we have 3 over x plus h minus now f of x. But what's f of x? f of x is given to be 3 over x. And this difference is all over h. Now we have to simplify this. There are a few ways you can go about simplifying this, but what I will do is I will show you a trick. This denominator of h, I'm going to put as h over 1. Now let's look at these three denominators. We have x plus h, we have x, and we have 1. We can multiply by the LCD. So that LCD is the product of x plus h and x and 1. So we have x plus h times x. Now if we multiply the numerator by that, we need to multiply the denominator by that same quantity because this is just 1. We're not changing what the value of this is, we're just going to change how it looks by multiplying by a fancy version of 1. Now, the reason why we're doing this is to clear the fractions. So let's see how this plays out. This is 3 over x plus h times our x times x plus h minus 3 over x 
times our x times x plus h. And this is all over h times our x times our x plus h. Now why didn't I write over 1? Because h over 1 is just h. Now, notice what happens. We have x plus h and x plus h cancel. And we have just 3 times x. Likewise, x and x cancel. And we have negative 3 times x, negative 3 times h. Notice where does that negative come from? It's a negative 3. So we have minus 3x, minus 3h, and this is all over h times x times x plus h. Now in the numerator, we can collect like terms, and we have just negative 3h over h times x times x plus h. But notice we have a common factor of h that can be canceled, and so our final answer is just negative 3 over x times x plus h.